What's up guys, Larry Chen here. Welcome to another episode of Hoonigan Autofocus. We did it, this is the 100th episode. Thank you guys so much for your support. Thanks to all the subscribers, thanks to all the fans. We're such a small team within the Hoonigan Media Machine. It's only five of us who work on this channel. We're lucky in that we get to kind of tell our story. You know, we travel the world, we take pictures, and we create these videos for you guys. So thanks for the support. For this video, I figured it'd be fun to kind of close out the year with my 100 favorite photos from 2019. Just a heads up, I will not be including any photos from the Formula Drift series in this presentation just because we spend the better part of the year following the series and I figured it deserves its own video, so stay tuned for that. First up, we got seriously one of my favorite if not the favorite photo of the year for me it's one that i shot at the daytona 24-hour race a pretty crazy race for me because i've shot pretty much every single professional 24-hour race except for this so this was the last one the story with this shot it, it looks kind of weird it looks like a little futuristic kind of crazy it actually looks fake but it's actually very very real i was on top of the grandstands actually at Daytona and I was looking through my long lens just kind of scanning to see if there's any lights or if there's any interesting foreground elements that I can incorporate into a photo. I spotted these Christmas lights from up there and I knew I had to get there right away you know before they shut them off. I got in my golf cart, went over there, found it. It turned out to be kind of like a little camp. They were camping out, barbecuing, drinking, all of that. But I asked them, hey, is it okay if I just shoot through your lights? And then they're like, it's kind of weird, but sure, you could do whatever you want. It took about 20 minutes for me to get something similar to this. Um, and then I just kind of started shooting as much as I can. This one, you know, as much as I would like to say that it wasn't luck, a lot of it is luck, you know, because a lot of it is that the cars are going so fast. I was very happy with how this one came out. I panned pretty slow at 10th of a second, but as you can see, it's very, very tack sharp. It kind of gave these uh, lights kind of like an odd oblong look. And I just love it so much because it's racing and then it has the color element of it. And it's just at night, everything is just, so cool, I've always wanted a shot like this. This was a very, very difficult shot to get. My good friend Von Gittin Jr. closed down kind of like a clover leaf on an off ramp. And this actual shoot started around midnight and we shot all the way till almost sunrise. It was really taxing on my body, but on top of that, it was so impossibly dark. I was shooting this at 20th of a second with a 400 millimeter wide open at 2.8, but I was all the way up at ISO 3200. Normally, I try not to go that high just because I try to limit the graininess, but because of how dark the scene was, it was basically impossible. I had to get something. So this was a shot where he was on the other side of the freeway and I was just doing my best to pan. I think uh, it came out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. It's very, very tech sharp uh, and something at a 20th of a second. It's just one of those things that's a lot harder to get. King of the Hammers is really a big race for us. In my opinion, and I think a lot of people will agree with me, it is the biggest off-road race in America. We're on the ground for a long time. We're on the ground for about 10 days for this race, just because it's not a single race. You have motorcycle racing, you have trophy trucks, you have UTVs, you have two different classes of ultra four rock crawlers. For two weeks out of the year, Hammertown, which is the actual town that kind of amasses from this race, is pretty much the biggest city in between Los Angeles and Barstow, just for that period of time. We really try our best to kind of show the vastness and how amazing this race is but this shot from the trophy truck race this year was one of my favorite the light was perfect the way the streaks were going through the sand i'm such a stickler on sand texture and also conveying speed through freezing the action not everything has to be a tenth of a second pan but if you do something like this it still shows that hey the vehicle is moving at a high rate of speed obviously it's kicking up all this dust and sand it's just such a pleasant way that it did it, you know? And, and because this part of the course, I always call it Mars. It kind of looks like Mars. There's 
huge rocks all over the place. So I'm actually standing on top of a really big rock and the racetrack just passes right by me. I shot this with a 35 at F2 at 800th of a second. So stoked on this shot. You could see the sand texture and the wispiness of it. It's just really beautiful. This next shot I'm really proud of. We had a chance to shoot the Supra before it got released. And this was actually at Daytona Beach. We were in town to cover the Daytona 500 NASCAR race, which is a season opener, but I just kind of had the opportunity to, to shoot the pace car. So you, if you can actually see, there's these tabs up here that are for the light bar. Of course, it's still a regular Supra street car, but the fact that we had a chance to shoot it in the rain on the sand kind of just gave it that look. And you'll see throughout this presentation that I'm showing kind of a lot of these stitched photos. So much of that is the fact that in the past couple years, especially this year, I really pushed myself to not limit just the size of the camera frame. Plus I'm shooting a lot more verticals just because I'm not limited to publishing on web only now. I can publish on print. I can publish on the videos. I can publish any way I want. And I just want to show the image for what I think it should look like. Doesn't need to be constrained in a certain crop. With that said, I try, try, try so hard, try my best with most of these images to not crop at all. If anything, what I'm doing is I'm just adding to the image. So this just from my estimation is probably 10 photos, but you can see how much I can actually zoom in. This is a 4K screen and the car is pretty much filling it almost edge to edge here. But the lens I'm using, I'm using a 1DX Mark II on the 135 at F2, 2000 for the second. So you can actually see a lot of the rain droplets just kind of frozen in time right up against the pier here. I wasn't really a big fan of NASCAR up until this year. I've had a chance to shoot it a little bit, but this year I had a chance to shoot the 500 as well as Talladega and also the finals. This is kind of one of those things where you actually have to be there to really enjoy the sights, the sounds, the smells, and just the feeling of being in the pits is unbelievable. I've always wanted to get a shot like this this was actually in the pit boxes. I'm actually standing right next to the crew chief. This is when the cars are coming in for their pit stops, but it's just so crazy to me. At the same time, Joey Logano was coming in for a pit stop and I was just, just waiting for Martin to come in. It was just the exact moment right before they came in. I was just so happy with how the framing worked out for this image. It's not so much focused on the car as it is focused on the crew guys. And it's just so cool to me to be able to get this natural frame in. That's one of the things I always look out for. I've always wanted to get a shot where somebody's doing a, a burnout and the tire smoke is just kind of billowing out from the car, but I wanted to shoot it from the top. Because this is the burn yard, I had a chance to do that. So basically what I did was I stood on top of the container and Scott started his burnout and just rolled out. And what's cool is that he rolled out at such a intense speed that the smoke, as you can see here, is actually being separated and it's actually being pushed up by the wing. And I thought it was just such a cool texture and just a, such a cool look that you don't normally get to see. It's just like splitting the wing. So I really, really love this image. It's one of my favorites of the year. Again, showing speed and conveying action by freezing it is, is really hard, but I was happy with how this one came out. I shot with a 35 at F2.8 at 2,000th of a second to kind of freeze the action on this one. This shot is from the 12 Hours of Sebring and my friends at Jackie Chan Racing actually invited me out there to cover them. You know, at the same time when I'm out there, I'm always shooting as much as I can, shooting everything and trying to grab as uh, beautiful shots as possible. Normally when people go to races and it rains, it's kind of like a damper, you know, they, they, 
they leave and they don't really want to watch and it's it's uh tough also for the drivers in the rain some drivers like the rain because they're faster in the rain but when the skies open up i just say hey it can't just be a little drizzle it needs to come down because it adds so much texture and it just changes the look of how the image is uh, the fact that there's reflections on the ground for this image this really is definitely one of my favorite images from the year. I caught it at a moment right, right before they turn off the lights. They pull in, they turn off the lights, and then they get to tire changing. But as soon as the Porsche pulled in, I just grabbed this frame pretty much close to the floor. But I'm just so happy with how it captured what's about to happen, but also all of the little... Uh, droplets getting lit up by the LED lights and you can see every single individual raindrop uh, in this picture which is just so cool. I've always wanted something like this. I've just never had a chance to shoot this but with that said part of it is the fact that they allow us on pit road to shoot these and I'm definitely grateful for that. This next one, I'm pretty proud of too. This is one of those things where it was a team effort. I had some really great assistance with me to help me kind of produce this image. So we actually shot this for Can-Am for their ad campaign. And we had the Can-Am out there. We did a light paint on it. I did a long exposure for the star streaks. We had some people fly a drone to light the background, but also at the same time, we had somebody drive a production vehicle behind it just to kind of make the light streak so it was a multi-parter this is probably 25 images put together to kind of make this single image i was just very happy with how this came out it's super sharp and just kind of gives it a different look versus the traditional light painting shot especially for our off-road vehicle i absolutely love this shot so much this is my buddy matt farah driving his Safari 911 and we just had the perfect moment when the sun was setting and there was a perfect cloud layer as you can see here and he's just speeding towards us and of course I'm shooting with my 400 wide open 1000th of a second just to kind of freeze the action. I remember the wind was intense it was blowing that's kind of why we have this awesome um, trail here. It's just a perfect moment in time for me it's just I just really didn't really have a chance to kind of enjoy this whole set just because we do so many photo shoots but looking back on it it just makes me so happy that we had a chance to create an image like this. This next one is kind of an interesting one there's actually a car here somewhere it's a um, smoke texture and we shot this at LS Fest West. I'm such a stickler on smoke and smoke texture when it comes down to like tire smoke. I always try to capture it as an extension of the car, of the vehicle. This, for some reason, the car was doing a burnout and then it just smoked out the whole area. You can't see the car anymore, but the smoke texture was so beautiful and it just looked like a painting. It actually doesn't look like tire smoke. It actually looks like some crazy clouds or or, or a fire or whatever but you can see how defined it is and how sharp it is and I absolutely love the way the light is going through it this had to be in my 100 top photos of the year I didn't really have a chance to shoot too much of Ken Block this year unfortunately but I did have a chance to go to his shop a couple times including for this shoot uh, of his new boat the Supra we actually did a full Hoonigan autofocus episode on this shoot where we actually did a light paint session with uh, his Raptor as well with his boat and his Raptor. There's a lot of big events that we do throughout the year. Without a doubt, Pikes Peak is the biggest and it takes the biggest effort. We are the official photography team for the historic race. So it's one of those things where I take so seriously. We're coming up on the 100th running of the race, which if you think about it, it's crazy that any event can run for that long. This is just one of those things where it's such an honor to be able to do this kind of work for the Pikes Peak organization. This year was pretty crazy. The light was amazing. The conditions were great. And of course the racing was just so good as usual. It's always one of my favorite races to photograph. I got uh, this shot during sunrise of my buddy Chris Fillmore coming up one of the corners. Uh, this is actually during a warm up lap. So that's why he's not kind of going full tilt. But the point is that I really, really like showing the city in the background. This is um, actually Colorado Springs right behind them but it's just so crazy to me that there's a race that exists 
in the world that has this kind of scenery. You know, for the racers and for the spectators, sometimes it's very easy for the day to go by or for them to actually do racing and not actually stop and appreciate how beautiful it is. That's our job. That's our job to capture the scene and kind of show what this race has to offer. This was the first time I've shot this race since 2011, which is the last year of the dirt. This is the first time I've actually shot this race where there was still ice on the race course, like just right off the race course. And I definitely took full advantage of that for a shot like this. Typically throughout the years, I haven't done vertical action shots or I haven't really shot that much vertical at all just because the platform that I was publishing on really didn't allow for that. But now, you know, with Instagram and with just the way that we're presenting our work now, we can do whatever we want. And I just love the way that this shot turned out. It's just one of those things where I went out on my way to make sure to frame this ice that was kind of reflecting the sunrise and just the colors, everything. Will here with his time attack car, just pushing super hard. It was just a great scene and it's just so cool to see. I mean, look look how cool this is. You could see his contact patch and how little of a contact patch uh, this uh, Civic actually has when it's going up the mountain. You guys probably have noticed that I really like to stitch photos together and I've really been pushing that over the past couple of years. This year at Pikes Peak, I definitely tried to do my best in terms of getting a little different shots from what I've normally gotten, especially stitching photos together. This scene is something that I've shot quite a bit and it's kind of interesting in that we're able to photograph these areas that are so far from the map. I don't even know, I even tried to find this town behind this car and it's just one of those things where it's so far away you can't actually tell where it is. It's pretty cool but their separation is really nice and that's kind of the nice thing about shooting these stitches is that you can actually still separate the car from the background and you can see how much I can actually zoom in on this image just to give you an idea how big this image is. I shot this with a 400 millimeter 2.8. This is almost 14k wide so 13,800 pixels wide and 6,500 pixels tall so it's just a massive image and you know that's the point is the 1dx2 camera it may only be 20 megapixels but I don't limit myself to shooting 20 megapixel images. This shot is very very it's very sad for me to look at but also it's one of those things where I'm glad that it exists my buddy Carlin Dunn passed away this year racing Pikes Peak and because he passed away next year, there's no more motorcycles up the mountain. The whole reason why we were there at Pikes Peak this year for Ducati was with Carlin Dunn. Carlin Dunn was a really good friend of Hoonigan and he was an amazing racer, definitely the fastest guy on the mountain and he would have smashed the overall motorcycle record if he finished. But unfortunately, he uh, didn't make it and uh, he crashed at the last corner. And uh, it's definitely very sad. And, you know, racing is inherently dangerous. It's so easy to forget that, you know, we're really out there trying to just capture the most beautiful and the most striking image possible while these guys are really putting their lives on the line for their passion. This next photo is actually related. That's Rennie Skaysbrook, and he actually won overall in motorcycles this year, but he finished right before Carlin because he qualified second. And uh, Carlin, since he qualified first, that means he could run last. Right after Rennie broke the record, this is, this is an image of him breaking the, like just celebrating after he realized he broke the record. He also, realized right away, hey, since Carlin was going after him, he probably could have just had the record for a couple minutes before Carlin would beat it. But, you know, after he celebrated and after I had this image, he kind of looked around and he's like, hey, where's Carlin? Um, of course, Carlin never made it. So it's super sad, but you know, I was there at the summit to uh, get this moment.
I got this shot at Gridlife Alpine Horizon. Gridlife is kind of just another event that we've really taken on as uh, kind of our second home. You know, I always say my first home is Formula Drift. My heart will always be there in terms of following the series and promoting the series and just kind of being part of the staff. But Gridlife is a motorsport slash music festival and they've really come up over the past couple of years and they've really allowed us to kind of push our craft at their events. They give us unlimited access. They let us do whatever and anything we want just to create art. And it's so nice. This is a shot of my really good friend, Rob Parsons, Chair Slayer, um, just kind of hanging out in the paddock. And I just happened to see this really defined and really beautiful rainbow just kind of going over the horizon. And I'm like, hey, Rob, let me just take a picture of you. I, I just got a perfect reflection of him. It's just as happy as can be. You know, Rob is the best. He's such a good driver. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what he can do in Time Attack next year. This next shot we actually also got at Alpine Horizon and it's like a very Tron-esque, very uh, video game kind of looking shot. But I'll tell you right now, it's definitely real life. The shot is actually of my friends Chris Forsberg and Ryan Turk. Ryan is following Chris uh, in the Corolla hatchback built by Steph Papadakis. This was kind of a thought out shot. You know, I, I kind of saw that this would have been possible, but it's only possible on one part of the course. It rained and while it was starting to dry up, there was still some puddles around. I saw that there was a, it was a possible shot for me to get like a nice slow pan to kind of get the a stage in the back. So what was happening is there was actually a concert happening at the same time when these drifters were actually going out. And even Chris Forsberg was thinking that there would be some interesting night shots like this. So if you can see this, he actually put on these tire flies that glow and it made a full rotation or almost a full rotation. And what's crazy is because he's drifting and the rear tires are spinning so much faster than the front tires, you can see that the rear tires basically made a, a rotation and a half versus the front tires. So it's like, you know, going that much faster than the front tires, but you can see how sharp it is. I was very happy with this shot. I, I just couldn't believe I got something like this. I was shooting pretty slow, 10th of a second, which honestly is probably the slowest I'll go where I'll, I'll know that potentially I'll be able to get a shot. Any slower than a 10th of a second, it's pretty much all luck. With this, I'm shooting on the ground and I even have the camera upside down near the water because the lens is just that much closer to the water to kind of create a better reflection. I shot this at Gridlife South in Atlanta. This is one of those photos where it's technically not that great. There's just nothing too fancy about it. But of course it's a storytelling shot. The guys at Top Garage have some of the best looking cars and they are also all amazing at driving. So anytime they show up to Grid Life, you know, I really kind of keep an eye out for them. They're coming around the horseshoe here at Road Atlanta and you can see this S15, the guy is flicking his friend off in the S13, who in the S13, you can see he's also flicking the other guy off. But it's just kind of fun because like I said, while it's not a very technically amazing shot, it's fun and it's a cool storytelling shot just because like these guys are drifting all the time and you know, there's a nonstop train of cars and that's kind of why it's so smoky and it's not very clear. There's some cool smoke detail here, but of course the main storytelling aspect of it is this guy. Very, very, very fun shot. While this looks like just like a kind of a rig shot or some on location Shoot. This was actually done in a studio. Toyota reached out to us and they wanted to see if we could shoot the RAV4 Prime in a studio and show it driving on a rainy road. But of course we can take it out because it was kind of under wraps. It's a code red car. We kind of pushed through it. This is probably one of the harder projects for me this year, but I'm so happy with how it came out. To actually simulate the rain, what we did was we got these pesticide sprayers and then we filled them with water and we got a leaf blower and we're blowing the water, simulating rain. And also so you could see that the texture, all the water droplets, you could see how it goes in front of the headlights. You could see obviously the windshield wipers are going 
and that the rain is kind of going sideways here. So that way, you know, they can blow it up to however big they need to, to kind of tell the story of, of this being all wheel drive. A lot of people ask me why I machine gun the cameras that I use. And this is a prime example. This photo is pretty much impossible to get unless you are machine gunning. I don't care how fast your trigger finger is. If you see the fire by the time you release the shutter, it's already too late and you've missed your shot. So I preemptively kind of hold down the shutter and start shooting, expecting her to come by and spit two big flame balls in my face. And uh, it worked out. People call me Machine Gun Larry because I'm always laying on the shutter. I'm very proud to say that I have multiple bodies from Canon with over a million actuations. In fact, we just sold a 1DX body with 1.3 million actuations and it was still running strong and it's still gonna live on. This next project I was really, really proud of. The past two years we've been building SEMA cars and this was our this year's SEMA car that we built with my friends at Moneyline and also Galpin Auto Sports. This is basically like a stage three Roush Mustang, six speed manual, 750 horsepower, all the bells and whistles. It's a super fun car. And this was actually a giveaway car. My friend Kaisel actually teamed up with me on the livery and man, I'm just so happy with how it came out. The new owner, I met him and we actually handed over the keys at the NASCAR finals this year and he really loved the car and I'm just so glad to see that it actually went to a uh, enthusiast who is going to enjoy it and drive it. But I shot this in downtown LA. This is also a stitch but it was only a two photo stitch just because I wanted to frame it perfectly with the city just with that skyline. So the bottom frame of course is just more focused on the car and the top frame is showing the city. You can really see just that separation. The bokeh is so pleasant and so nice. This was with my 135 F2. It's just great. The fall off, the sharp areas are just super tack, tack, tack sharp, but you can see how nice and pleasant all the bokeh balls are. This shoot I'm super proud of. A lot of the stuff that we do, you guys see, we follow racing, we follow car culture, we do shop tours, we feature personal cars, SEMA builds, all of that. But of course, doing that stuff doesn't pay the bills. What pays the bills are the commercial jobs. And while we get to work closely with OEM manufacturers like Toyota and Ford, we never actually have worked with a motorcycle manufacturer. So this year we had a chance to work with Harley Davidson to help launch two of their new bikes. This shot was actually done at their Proving Grounds in Arizona. The track is so beautiful, but I just kind of wanted to do this stitch more surrounding the bike. You can see that the frame, it, this 4K image is just the bike and the rest of it is just this nice, pleasant background. Really nice, pleasant bokeh and fall off area. You can see how thin the focus plane is. You can also see that we put a rock here to kind of tilt it up a little bit. I could see more of the side of the bike. This image is pretty big. This is a 10K, so it's 10,000 wide and 4,400 tall. Every year at the SEMA show, we go all out and the whole team goes. We kind of go early and stay late because we want to try to get as many shoots in as possible. We kind of stack them all together for the winter time. This year was pretty crazy. We went a couple days early. I reached out to my buddy Roy from Team Wildcards and he has a beautiful Hokoska. He hooked up with his friends at Rent JDM and they brought out a beautiful white R34 GTR for us to shoot. For me, it's really hard a lot of times to shoot two cars together, especially if they're different shapes and different sizes. So with this image, we put Roy's car just a little bit closer to camera and it was awesome to kind of capture that Vegas beautiful desert sunset, just the colors and the texture and all of that. This was also a stitch that we put together. It's uh, 12,000 wide and 5,000 tall. So you can see how much we can zoom in on these. It's basically almost one frame per car. This image may not look like anything crazy, but for some reason, I don't know why I posted this image and it turned out to be the most liked image on my Instagram of all time. In fact, it has, let's see, 
right now it has 74,200 likes. I think part of it is because it's a Mercedes and generally speaking, Mercedes are just not looked in that light in terms of just super performance. It's more about luxury. This is cool in that it's a Mercedes and you can obviously tell it's a Mercedes because it has a badge and the grill and all of that. But it has this insane splitter as well as that intake manifold with the exposed hood. It just looks so crazy. You just know something special about it. Plus the satin black colors, it's just beautiful. Most of the time when we go to the show, we kind of put all our feelers out and kind of see which cars people would be interested in. So a lot of times that potentially could be the last time I ever see the car, unless we arrange something. That's kind of why we stay so much later in Vegas, because we just kind of want to knock out as many shoots as possible. Who knows? I mean, this car obviously left the country, but a lot of cars, they may go into a private collection. We'll never see them ever again. This shoot is a perfect example of a car that potentially, who knows, it may never see the light of day. The Ring Brothers built this car and they actually hired us to do this shoot as a kind of like a love letter to this car and just to kind of capture it in its prime. No scratches. It's not dirty. It's never really been driven. It's so clean. It's brand new. It's absolutely beautiful. So they built this Camaro for a client overseas in Europe and it's close to a seven figure price for this car. We shot it in Nevada. You could see the Colorado River in the back. This is kind of one of my favorite stitches from the year. It's actually pretty big. It's almost 17K. So it's 16,800 wide and 4,300 tall, which really allows you to zoom in so much. You can see how shallow the depth of field is and, and how much detail we have on the car, but we can still kind of zoom out and like you can see how much texture and just the way the light interacts with the mountains in the back. I love this image so much. I'm just so happy with how this shoot came out. This was one of the last shoots of the year. It's not the last shoot. Unfortunately, I can't show you guys a lot of the shoots we did in the end of the year until next year, but this is the last one that I can show. This one I'm actually really proud of because uh, it's not planned. We went to Miami for the NASCAR finals and I just figured it'd be fun to kind of send out some feelers, text some locals and see if anyone would be interested in doing a shoot. And this car is actually pretty famous. A buddy of mine, Aaron Beck, actually designed the original version of this car. It's called the F-132. So it's like a F-1 car. It's based off of a 32 Ford. This uh, particular one is actually based off of a 1930 Ford Model A with mostly S2000 underpinnings. S2000 motor, S2000 transmission, S2000 subframe. It's basically like a, a Ford Model A slash S2000. And we took it to one of my favorite spots in Miami, just uh, right outside the city under this uh, underpass, which kind of gives it a nice natural framing. I love the fact that it's just a single palm tree here and just everything about it. It's, it's so fun because when we showed up for the shoot, there was just a bunch of cops parked there. And I knew we weren't in LA because they didn't immediately impound the car and uh, crush it. Well, that's it for my top 100 photos, excluding my formal drift stuff from 2019. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun kind of going back through my old photos. A lot of times I don't really get a chance to look at them that long because we're constantly going from event to shoot to event to shoot to whatever project. I never really get to enjoy them myself. And it's kind of cool to go over them and see how much we actually got done this year. Definitely looking forward to next year and I'm really looking forward to the next 100 videos.